I'm Beth Grafton Cardwell. I'm a citrus IPM specialist and research entomologist with the Department of Entomology at UC Riverside. I obtained my PhD in entomology from UC Berkeley in 1985. And I've been stationed at the Kearney Agricultural Center for the past 23 years studying citrus IPM. I've been asked to explain to you what my definition of integrated pest management is. I would say that's using every imaginable tactic to manage pest mites and insects in a crop, in my case citrus. Growers hire pest control advisors to monitor for pests and make recommendations to them. And my major clientele is these PCAs that, that do the monitoring. Pest control advisors might use uh, pheromone traps, which are synthetic sex pheromones which attract male moths or scales to the females, and they use these traps to determine whether the animals are present in an orchard or if they're at damaging levels or if it's time to take action. Uh, they may combine that with degree day units, which is temperature units. Insects develop based on temperature. The warmer it is, the faster they develop, and they might use these pheromone traps in combination with temperature units in order to predict when an event is going to happen, like an emergence of an insect pest. And then they would know to take action such as spray with a pesticide or release a natural enemy. Pest control advisors use techniques such as a beating sheet. They might lay a sheet underneath a tree and shake the foliage vigorously in order to knock large-ish insects such as katydids or beetles or or other insects out of the tree onto the beating sheet so that they can see them and count them. They may just go through the orchard and collect leaves or fruit samples and examine those for insect pests and mites and in that way monitor for these insects. Once they've monitored for the insects, then it's time to decide if they're at a critical threshold and to take action. The action that pest control advisors might take could be releasing natural enemies such as parasitic wasps or lady beetles or predatory mites or it might be changing something in the environment of the insect to make it less suitable for it and I'll give an example of that. Uh, the earwigs like to hide inside the wraps that are around baby trees around the trunks and then they climb up and down the trunk and feed on the leaves and a simple tactic for eliminating the earwigs is to simply remove those wraps from the trees so that they don't have a home to live in. Another tactic might be applying a pesticide and in that case pest control advisors work very hard to utilize pesticides that are less toxic to natural enemies and allow those natural enemies to survive so that they can help with the control of the target pest or other pests that are in the citrus system. There are several challenges in IPM. The first one is that not every insect can be controlled with natural enemies and so pesticides are often required and so then it becomes a, a, a creative challenge to figure out how to use those pesticides in a way that will have the least impact on all the other insects and mites in the system. One of the strengths of integrated pest management is that it's a long-term strategy. Instead of just responding to insects in the moment, generally with pesticides because they work quickly, it's a long-term strategy and a creative one of how can I manage this pest over many, many years with as few pesticides as possible so that the pesticides last longer, so that I get more uh, help from the natural enemies, and so that I can protect the environment and, and worker safety and things like that. So IPM is a long-term strategy for managing pests in any system. There's great compliance of citrus growers and great involvement in IPM. And this ensures that they can grow a profitable crop. I don't believe that the growers in California could grow their crop profitably if they relied solely on pesticides and we're not involved in understanding the biologies of the insects and their natural enemies and the balance of how everything works and if they weren't creative in, in utilizing all of the tactics available. One of the greatest challenges for IPM is the invasion of new pests into the system. Often the new pests arrive, they don't bring their natural enemies with them, they're out of control, they're, they may carry a, a deadly disease. For example, we have recently had in citrus 
a new pest arrived called Asian citrus psyllid, and it can carry a bacterium that causes a disease called Feng Long Bing. And it's very difficult to control this pest because it didn't bring its natural enemies with it. And the chemicals that work best on it are the ones that are most toxic to natural enemies needed for other pests. And so we have to get very creative when we have new pests arrive on the scene. And I find that to be one of the most exciting parts of my job because I get to act like an, a detective and figure out what is the pest, how are we going to monitor for it, how are we going to know when it's at damaging levels? Can we bring in natural enemies from a foreign country or another place to help control it? What pesticides are going to work on it? And how do we communicate all of this to growers and the general public in order to get the problem resolved? In summary, I want to say that the Citrus IPM program has a very long history with many, many researchers involved in studying it well over a hundred years of, of research and many of the growers in this in California conduct IPM already. They ha hire pest control advisors, they monitor for pests, they wait until they see damaging populations before they use pesticides, they release natural enemies. The, the citrus growers in California are very involved in IPM.